Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 7 for January the 14th, 2018. We are still studying from Unit 2 entitled, A Living Faith in God. Our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is No Matter the Cost. No Matter the Cost. Our devotional reading comes out of Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 9 through 21. Uh, background scripture comes out of Daniel chapter 3. And we'll be studying today from Daniel chapter 3, verses 19 through 23. And also verses uh, 26 through 28. Our key verse reads, Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel to rescue his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. And that comes out of Daniel chapter 3 verse 28 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore the connection between the faith of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and their deliverance from the fiery furnace. Secondly, to sense the faith commitment of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And also to identify situations that call for exercise of faith in the face of martyrdom. We have two outlines that uh, we will be discussing today as a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Bound for Their Faith, and then the second outline is entitled, Blessed for Their Faith. We certainly thank and praise God uh, for this privilege to be able to share this lesson with you as we continue our uh, study of the book of Daniel. Uh, we hope that you will uh, go back and uh, as we did, uh, we began our study in uh, Daniel chapter 1. Today we're in Daniel chapter 3. And so we pray that you would grab uh, paper and pen and certainly your Bible as we talk about uh, this lesson today and some practical things that um, come up in our lives that challenge uh, and test our faith uh, each and every day. But we want to share just a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson. Uh, everything in Daniel 3 suggests clearly that the main purpose of this chapter is directly practical and not doctrinal. There are no predictions. The narrative simply reports the fortunes of the three friends of Daniel as steadfast believers and confessors of the faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 34 cites the incident as a lesson in an example of faith as a practical lesson of growing into a practicing saint and being doers of the word it is important to note that later Jewish tradition regards rejection of idolatry as the quintessential quality of a Jew Avoiding idolatry is tantamount to obeying God's commandments uh, while practicing idolatry means denying them. And so we want to stop right there. But we want to uh, share uh, just a few points about uh, the book of Daniel. Um, uh, some have uh, shied away from it because uh, it's uh, somewhat difficult to understand. But we want to offer these few points that we uh, shared even last week. Um, uh, the study of the book of Daniel uh, is like the book of Revelation in the New Testament. Uh, the book of Daniel is an apocalypse, uh, which means an unveiling. Uh, and so this type of writing is found also in Isaiah chapters uh, 24 uh, through 27. And also, if you study the book of Zach Zechariah, in terms of, of the vision, you will also see this type of uh, apocalypse or this type of apocalyptic writing, um, which highlights uh, when wickedness seemed uh, supreme in the world and evil powers were 
a dominant and apocalypse was given to show the real um, situation behind that which it was apparent and also uh, to indicate the eternal victory of righteousness upon the earth so God used this type of writing uh, through Daniel to illustrate that uh, these points that we uh, uh, just shared with you and so we hope that you will uh, go back and look at Daniel uh, with a different viewpoint uh, it was written uh, in the 6th century uh, BC uh, but last week we noted uh, when we studied the book of Daniel uh, we saw uh, from the first chapter that uh, God was repeatedly uh, uh, intervening uh, in the life of Daniel uh, and his friends and so uh, from last week uh, we saw that these young men refused to eat the king's food and today we see uh, Daniel's friends refuse to serve the king's God and so there is a cost as our topic uh, uh, reveals to us today in, in serving the Lord. Uh, we hope that you understand that and we hope that you would look at uh, your sufferings uh, with an eye that there is a purpose for them. Uh, you know as I studied this lesson I was thinking about uh, the convictions of these uh, young men Daniel and his friends and I, I just wondered uh, uh, if if Judah had um, asserted these type of convictions uh, uh, as as a nation, uh, perhaps they would not have gone into captivity at all. But it was something that uh, uh, raised questions for me as I looked at the conviction of Daniel and his friends uh, to stay the course. Uh, no matter what they faced, no matter what the faith challenge was, they stayed with um, with the laws uh, of God. Uh, certainly they understood the Mosaic law and they exercised it even as we study this lesson today. So we pick up the first outline uh, from Daniel chapter 3. Uh, verses 19 through 23 and we hope that you will go back and start at chapter 1 and follow through uh, uh, through chapter 3 because where we are beginning today um, it sort of lends itself that we need to know what happened before um, our printed text so I want to read this from uh, the NIV translation Daniel chapter 3 verses 19 through 23 the Bible says then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and his attitude toward them changed he ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and throw them into the burning the blazing furnace verse 21 so these men wearing their robes uh, trousers turbans and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace the king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took took up Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and these three men firmly tied fell into the blazing furnace so what we have here uh, uh, in this lesson in this first outline these men were tied up uh, these young men Daniel's friends were tied up for their faith but we want to make sure that we understand that uh, faith and the gospel or synonymous because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God uh, I was looking at Matthew we, we certainly won't have an opportunity to read all of these uh, scriptures with you today but but I want you to look at Matthew chapter 13 um, as we think about 
what happens to us as we uh, read the word of God there are various things and Jesus gave a parable about the sower um, and I want you to read that from Matthew uh, chapter 13 beginning at verse 1 but uh, over in verse 18 Jesus explains uh, this parable of the sower and he says here in verse 18 therefore hear the parable of the sower when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it then the wicked one comes and snatches away that uh, what was sown in his heart this is he who received the seed by the wayside verse 20 but he who received the seed on the stony places this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy yet he has no root in himself but endures only for a while for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word immediately he stumbles verse 22 now he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful verse 23 but he who received seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it um, who indeed bears fruit and produces some hundredfold some sixty some thirty I raise these verses with you today from Matthew chapter 13 and and some of the explanations here that Jesus gives because we have different reactions when we hear the word of God or different manifestations uh, when we hear the word of God but in this uh, parable as it is explained uh, by Jesus himself there are situations persecution tribulation that arises uh, because of the faith because of the word because of your adherence because you understand and I I just want to uh, parallel that in Matthew chapter 13 with what is happening here in Daniel chapter uh, 3 in terms of Daniel's three friends uh, tribulation and persecution uh, has arisen it, it has uh, uh, manifested itself in the lives of these uh, friends of Daniel because they are taking a stand on God's word and now they are being thrown into the fire because of that stand and I want you to understand that when you give your life to Christ and you make a stand of, of, of that uh, you are going to live according to God's word that you are thoroughly tried and you are thoroughly uh, uh, persuaded by the word of God I, I just want you to know that the fire is going to get hot the persecution is going to get uh, 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 even in some cases to become unbearable uh, uh, for us but but I like this in the text that these young men uh, surrendered to the fire I don't read where they uh, they were kicking and screaming about not going into the fire they seem to have an attitude or resolve that they are going into this situation of uh, this fiery situation no matter what there's a resolve in their spirits here in the text that they are trusting in God no matter what if you follow through the explanation that they give uh, to King Nebuchadnezzar they are thoroughly convinced that 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 God has the ability to save them but even if he does not they are going into this situation no matter what God does and I think that is a goal for us uh, uh, for me and, and and for you as Christians uh, that we ought to have a, a resolve in our spirit that uh, you know even if God does not deliver you from the trial that you're going through and though it may be hot and though it ve may be very hot that you still believed uh, and trusted in God uh, that there was a reference here uh, as we read earlier from 
the biblical context of Hebrews chapter 11, we know that to be uh, uh, where the patriots of faith, the founders of faith, in various instances, various situations, and people involved, uh, they stood their ground uh, no matter what. They were uh, uh, killed. Uh, the Bible says uh, in Hebrews chapter 11 that they all died in faith, not receiving the promise. They all were looking ahead. That was the consistency of the patriarchs of faith that they die in what they believe, that they stood such a, 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 a ground in, in what they believed and how they were convicted, that they were ready and that they did die uh, uh, according to their faith. You used to hear that years ago, the saints would say, for God I live and for God I die. I will die and so that is where we are in this lesson today and as we said this is practical because this is something that we all face uh, I believe the Apostle Paul said this and even in Romans chapter 8 that we face death all day long and so these young men have uh, made their stand uh, I want you to uh, as we read just a little bit of this commentary here uh, I did note uh, that uh, uh, there's some follow-up reading in the New Testament, uh, particularly in, in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, uh, verses 12 through 19, and also uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Uh, the book of 1 and 2 Peter uh, illustrate uh, various types of suffering uh, that 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 are incurred in in the Christian's life, and he also gives application of some sufferings that we bring up on ourselves that we should uh, uh, shy away from. So I want you to read those uh, at your leisure. But it's important to understand, as a child of God, there will be tests, there will be trials. God will try, God will test you. Uh, Jeremiah talks about that, I believe. Uh, in the 17th chapter the book of Jeremiah God tests the mind and the heart God allows things to come up uh, on us sometimes uh, 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 James chapter 1 also highlights various trials that come up on us and he says count it all joy and that that is a challenge for us today to consider the thing that that uh, we're going through that is uncomfortable as joyous to consider that it is it is a blessing to suffer uh, as a child of God. It is a blessing to be privileged by God to suffer for the cause of Jesus Christ. I, I, I think that is something that we really need to take a look at. But, but in the preceding verses in chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar built a golden statue in his honor and he eventually made a decree uh, manipulated by anti-Israelite leaders in his court uh, and so that all should bow to worship uh, at the sounding of the horn. The same leaders made it known to the king that uh, the men um, the king had just promoted. You can see that in Daniel chapter 2 verse 30, 49 and also Daniel chapter 3 uh, verse 12 did not show him or his gods respect as they refused to bow they told on these guys uh, uh, they snitched on him if you will uh, that these young men did not uh, bow down so uh, based on the decree uh, they were to be cast in the fiery furnace I, I just want you to know today sometimes uh, we don't appreciate the fact that uh, life is on the table for the believer and death is on the table for the believer. I don't want you to think that the devil wants to be your friend. The devil wants to kill and to steal and to destroy. Uh, we should understand that. He is not playing with us. Uh, we should be careful not to uh, straddle the fence if you will. If you're going to serve the Lord, serve the Lord. But you certainly can't serve the devil and Jesus Christ and so but the devil wants to kill us contrast that with Jesus saying in John chapter 10 I came 
that you might have life and have life more abundantly so a full life so you see the contrast uh, God uh, G through Jesus Christ came to give us life and yet the devil wants to kill us so this is what Joshua meant in the 24th chapter he said choose you this day which God you want to serve or that you're going to serve and so we need to understand if we are going to serve the devil then we need to know the characteristics and the attributes of the devil uh, and, I, and I don't want you to think that the devil is your friend the devil has a subplot if you will he has an, al an, an alternate mission uh, which is to kill you to cause you to miss the mark uh, to cause you to miss the the eternal life uh, that Jesus brought to us even as uh, uh, as John chapter 3 tells us that uh, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world but he came that the world might be saved through him so we want to be able to understand that so uh, these young men uh, were being thoroughly tested in their life is on the line the question is asked here in the quarterly have you ever been asked to adjust your beliefs to accommodate someone else and how did you handle that all of us have been faced and will be uh, uh, confronted with the spirit of compromise uh, uh, that something that challenges our convictions and that's something that we won't readily adhere to because we don't want to upset the norm uh, and so I want you to see in this lesson today that this was something that was public uh, with these three uh, friends of Daniel. Uh, everybody knew they were uh, somebody told on them. They made it known to the authorities. And so uh, this spectacle, if you will, was set forth by the king who had the authority to allow you to live and he had the authority to take your life and so everybody was looking at this situation so what I'm saying is is that this is a public thing that we have to uh, 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 be uh, uh, able to stand on uh, not just in the church not just at home but at work uh, uh, before uh, the world at large because this is where the Lord has uh, left us uh, as Jesus said in John chapter 17 in his high priestly prayer he was praying uh, for his disciples uh, father don't take them out of the world but leave them in the world uh, uh, but yet keep them in the situation where you are leaving them so we won't be able to escape my point is uh, public knowledge of who we are in Christ Jesus our Lord the second and last outline is entitled blessed uh, for the faith this is taken from Daniel chapter 3 verses 26 through 28 again from the NIV translation Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted Shadrach Meshach and Abednego servants of the Most High God come out and come here so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. I want you to pin uh, 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 your, your notes on that. They came out of the fire. Uh, verse 27, And the satraps, prefects, and governors, and royal advisors crowded around them, and they saw that the fire uh, had not harmed their bodies. I want you to pin that. Uh, they, no harm had come to them, nor was a hair of their heads singed their robes were not scorched and there was no smell of fire on them verse 28 then Nebuchadnezzar said praise be to the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego who has sent his angel and rescued his servants I want you to underline that if you can he rescued uh, his servants they trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god this is profound here to see uh, how God has worked um, in this situation uh, that, that threatened 
these young men's life. I said early on, we noticed how God kept intervening in these guys' lives, in these young men's lives. Don't you know you have a history with God? Can't you see that he keeps on doing great things in your life? Can't you see that you have such a history with God? You can turn to page 1 where God brought you out. You can turn to page 10. You can see where God brought you out. You you, you can turn to page 50 and you can see how God uh, uh, brought you out. You can turn to page uh, 150 and you can see how God brought you out. My point is you have been perpetually delivered ever since even before you got saved don't you see and can't you see how God was moving in your life to bring you where you are today and this is the thing that excites me God blessed me to come out of sin just like these young men he delivered me in such a way and he delivered you in such a way you don't even look like a sinner anymore you don't even walk like a sinner anymore you don't even talk like a sinner anymore you are just serving the Lord don't you know God has caused that to happen in our lives can't you see in this text today how God has caused these young men to go into the fire and come out of that situation he didn't put the fire out he carried you he carried uh, Shadrach Meshach and Abednego he carried them through the fire sometimes we will not get out of every situation that comes up in our lives but God purposefully sometimes allows you to go through the situation to go in the front door and come out of the back door not jump out of a window not go out of the side door there's a process of suffering that we go through and I, I, I've learned this over the years that uh, if you ever think uh, 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 about how you were made into what you are to this day I want you to know that suffering played a huge role in what you are today suffering has a way of defining us uh, and refining us in terms of uh, what God wants to uh, produce in our lives. It's the trial that makes us the uncomfortable thing that uh, we don't want to have happen in our lives that we want God to just get us out of without seeing the outcome. And this is where uh, I think sometimes we miss how God works. And so, uh, 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 but now Nebuchadnezzar has seen again this is a public spectacle here uh, Nebuchadnezzar has witnessed that this was a tactic this was a strategy of his to take these young men's lives but God has intervened and now he can see that there's a greater king than him there's a greater power at work uh, uh, than the one that is surfaced. Remember early on when we talked about this apocalyptic type writing? Uh, can't you see uh, the evil powers at work? But over behind the scenes, over in uh, uh, behind the fire is God. Uh, and so he brings us out victoriously through the things that the devil intended uh, for our demise and so I hope that you can connect the dots uh, in this lesson today but I, I want to reread verse 28 before we get to uh, the conclusion of this lesson then Nebuchadnezzar said praise be to the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego I want to just pause there when God brings you out of a situation, even the king, the enemy, the one that set the fire, the one that uh, gave the decree that the fire should be seven times hotter, has now moved into a praise. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. The Bible doesn't tell us here what everybody else was doing, but let's just look at ourselves for a minute we ought to be able to praise God 
for what he has done in our lives. This is what it's all about. A praise is retrospect. It looks back uh, into the things that God has done. And then the praise is perspective. It looks ahead. Uh, and so, as I said earlier, God has repeatedly intervened in these young men's lives from the very beginning to show himself to be on their side. If God is for you, then who can be against you? If God has given you the grace to go in to a situation that was uncomfortable for you, and you prayed about that situation and you stand your ground don't you know that God is not going to ever ever leave you nor forsake you he is going to I'm talking to myself now uh, uh, God is going to bring you out of the situation that he allowed to happen in your life for a purpose for a reason God is not going to leave you without seeing about you you have the Holy Ghost who is to remain uh, uh, with you. And the Holy Ghost goes everywhere you go. He goes in the good places. He goes through the good situations with you. He also goes through the trial and the tribulation. Uh, but I want you to read. We won't have time to go over there today. But I want you to read 2 Corinthians chapter 1 in its entirety. Uh, and be blessed by the God of all comfort. Again, the question is asked here in the quarterly, what are you facing at this very moment that is requiring you to take a bold stance of faith? Seek support and advice from the class. I don't know about you, but I'm facing something. And I know you are facing something at this very moment and it is requiring you take a bold stance of faith did you ever know notice that about a trial it requires us to stay the course don't don't change don't leave don't run off from the lord don't stop praying don't stop uh, doing the things that god has caused you to do Sometimes in this life, especially as Christians, we can't just run around the track, if you will. Sometimes we can make progress even if we crawl. We can make progress if we're not on top of the mountain. You can still make progress if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And just go about doing the things that God has given you to do. But understanding that God knows what you're going through. God understands what you're, going, what you're going through. And if he allows that situation in your life, he has a purpose. And he will bring you out. Just look at your history book. This is not the first trial that you've been in. And it certainly won't be the last. But God has repeatedly intervened in your life just as he did with these young men. So I want to be, uh, uh, I hope that you are encouraged by this lesson today. I'm certainly encouraged. I needed this lesson and I know you need it as, a, as well. So as we move to our closing prayer, Lord Jesus, we are in desperate need of bold faith and unwavering faith that will not bow or bend to the ways of this world. Help us, Lord, to duplicate the boldness of these three Hebrews and that of your Son, Jesus the Christ. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And thank God. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.